Thank you very much. Uh, I'm honored I get invited uh, by neurosurgeons and uh, it's a great pleasure to give you something on uh, how did uh, I manage to publish over 400 uh, papers uh, during my career. The first thing I think one has to do is not how to publish but how to get involved in research as a medical student. And indeed, my first solo publication when uh, I was an intern. The second thing yeah, one has to do is to get involved as a resident in training uh, in, uh, uh, in, pub in the publication process. And during my residency, I managed to put my name on 50 papers uh, in international journals. And I presented many papers in international conferences. One thing that helped me to do that uh, was actually when I finished my residency in plastic surgery, uh, my wife just got accepted in obstetrics in Canada. And I was initially very upset because I'm not going back to Saudi Arabia to get my job started. But that was one of the best things that happened in my life. Because I worked uh, as a fellow. I took many, many fellowships in Toronto. I was called the chronic fellow of the University of Toronto. I took craniofacial fellowship, hand surgery fellowship, microsurgery fellowship, pediatric plastic surgery fellowship, pediatric craniofacial fellowship, brachial plexus fellowship. I, nobody would do that, but I was spending the time until my wife finishes her residency. And I knew later that that was excellent. Not only be, I became uh, well knowledge in plastic surgery, but I managed to have a lot of extra time as a fellow and I published so many papers. And I learned that I have to have protected time to go to the lab as a resident. And because residents are usually very busy in Canada, I took my vacation time to go to the lab. I studied uh, when I was a resident uh, fetal wound healing in tendons fetal nerve healing. I was actually the first to study fetal nerve healing in the world. And it was really fun. And I won the American Plastic Surgery Educational Award. Uh, I remember I used to tease my wife because she's an obstetrician. And I studied the fetal nerve healing in a large animal model, in the sheep. So we got the pregnant sheep. I used to take, uh, do the, uh, take the baby out of the uterus, experiment on the nerve, and do cut the nerve, for instance, and then put the baby back. I have to put the ringer's lactate to replace the amniotic fluid. And after two weeks, get the same uh, pregnant sheep, take the baby out again, and do nerve conduction studies in the lab on the baby, and then put the baby back, and so on. So by the time I finished this experiment, I could do C-section in five minutes. And I dared my wife that she'd do it quicker than I would do. Now, and then I, I didn't have a chance to take a, a, a degree in uh, medical statistics, but I knew that was very important. So I took many, many courses from my own money. I had to pay and studied how to critique, how to publish, how to uh, study medical statistics, and how to do your own. And that was very important. Uh, and then I, I knew that before many, many years ago, there was not like the internet and all the journals on the net now. I had to read journals and not textbooks to get acquainted with what is of interest in the international journals in my field. I remember big fights again with my wife. 18 journals I had to subscribe. Uh, and that uh, took a lot of our money. We were not very rich at the time. And uh, now it's very easy. You don't have to subscribe anything. Everything is free online. And then after doing all this, and you finish your training, and being a chronic fellow, did a lot of lab work, it was time eventually to come back to Saudi Arabia. And I was uh, offered, 
because of this, all these fellowships, I was offered many, many jobs. And because I loved research and publications, I decided to take an academic job. That was also a disaster. My wife was very upset because it was half the salary of all the other jobs I had. So I took a King Saud University job despite the 50% less salary. And um, I think it paid off at the end. One very important issue is uh, one has to read basic science related to uh, the field. As a plastic surgeon, I, uh, I uh, read and wrote a lot of multi-organ failure, reperfusion, injury, wound healing, and I uh, taught uh, residents basic science. And actually that paid, uh, 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 at the end, I was appointed as the director of the research center at the medical college at King Saud University. Now I'm back to Saudi Arabia as a staff, and that was a big task because now I want to prepare uh, myself to, to, to publish, essentially. Because as an academic person, you get promoted by your publications. And I, if I had 50 publications as a resident, I had to continue uh, with the same rate or even higher as staff. So I actually sat down and did a plan. The first year I came back from Canada in the early 1990s. And I thought of basic science research, clinical research, and genetics research. For basic science, what I did is I visited our lab. I saw the facility. I, uh, and I was very, very lucky to be, uh, at that time, a part-timer at uh, King um, uh, at the National Guard, King Fahed. At that time, it used to call, be called King Fahed Hospital. And there was uh, a cardiac surgeon there who had a small lab. I was so excited, and I went to introduce myself, and I took his permission to use his facility, and he said, no problem. And I remember very well uh, I managed to buy uh, little microscopes and some instruments. And I started their uh, little wound healing research lab under the umbrella of this cardiac surgeon, believe it or not. And I, uh, I had a junior at the time. He's now a big time consultant plastic surgeon. His name is uh, Dr. Thunayan. And he was uh, just a resident, very interested to do anything. So I told him, Let's do this, uh, and we created uh, a model. Uh, and a you know, at that time, we didn't have large uh, animal model, so we created a rat sciatic nerve model, and we did a lot of research on intercide nerve repair. Uh, and it was very interesting. He was very keen and helped me a lot. And we were the first in the world from Saudi Arabia to publish intercide nerve repair. Uh, findings by electron microscopy and we had later on it materialized on our special technique to treat uh, painful neuromas of the superficial reading nerve and we got the ethics committee at King Saud University to do that on patients and eventually there is something actually in the uh, literature uh, on uh, the Saudi technique for repairing in, uh, painful neuromas of the uh, superficial reading nerve uh, by the end to side nerve concept. For clinical research, <clears throat> this applies not only to plastic surgeons or peripheral nerve surgeons or any, this is essential, I think. And if somebody doesn't have the love for the lab, you can still publish a lot in, in, in clinical research. And the way to do that has to be planned from day one. The first uh, thing you should do is see what you do the most and uh, decide the theme of republications even before you start. For instance, if you are in Saudi Arabia, I guess as a neurosurgeon, the head trauma and spinal cord will be a major thing here because wherever you are, you're gonna see lots of these patients. Now, so I started the first week I came to Saudi Arabia to organize myself, design data sheets, document uh, everything, planning to document everything I see. 
and I stored my own data uh, in different computers. Um, so one of the examples, of course, is of static brick uh, research. When I came, I did not find anyone who has a multidisciplinary approach on obstetric plexus palsy, so I decided to establish a clinic at the university and involve obstetrician, that's my wife of course, new, neonatologists, physiotherapists, and so on, and we established uh, the first plexus, obstetric plexus multidisciplinary clinic, and uh, everything we did, we published. To the extent, I think we, I have 60 publications on obstetric palsy alone. Uh, another thing, of course, the, uh, some, because we're in Saudi Arabia, I'm also a hand surgeon, not only a peripheral nerve surgeon, so we see a lot of pediatric hand fractures. Why? Because I guess uh, if somebody knows the statistics, almost one quarter of the population of Saudi Arabia are pediatrics, which means you will see a lot of pediatric uh, hand injuries. So I designed that and I have uh, over 100 publications in hand fractures. Um, another very important principle is to write up anything you do, even the technical modifications of well-known surgical techniques. One thing also that Saudi Arabia is very famous for uh, is uh, genetic diseases, especially autosomal recessive, because we have uh, interfamily marriage is, is, uh, is still common until now. And as a surgeon, you have to be observant. And remember, the Saudi population is a gold mine of rare syndromes. So what I did is I made friends with the hospital's genetic teams. And uh, uh, we, every family that comes with, uh, with a congenital anomaly or something that's in common or uh, what we did is that we immediately gathered them. I get a resident of mine to take the case as a project. We take the permission, we take the ethics committee, we take the consent and study the candidate genes with, my, with the genetics team. And uh, uh, believe it or not, I have identified over 50 new gene mutations related to my field. And I got lucky, uh, and I have actually one syndrome called Alcatan palmar duplication syndrome, which means these were uh, uh, cases where the patient, you know, the hand has a palm and a dorsum. These, ha these patients have two palms, they have no dorsum. So each hand will have a palm on the palmar side and a palm on the dorsal side. And finally, I think one has to be very smart. You know how to write to the point, know where to submit your paper. This is very important. Sometimes my colleagues ask for my help and the only thing they had, I had to offer them is to just change the, you know, where to submit the paper is extremely important. Because some, uh, if your paper say is not uh, a randomized uh, prospective double-blind study, you are not going to submit it to a very high-impact journal because that journal will not accept it, even though the, the work may be good. So you have to choose the right journal to submit to. And many of the people who submit their papers initially get rejected, especially in the beginning of their career, they get disappointed and they lose interest. Um, also, one has to train himself to write about interesting or new material only. And most important, be patient. It doesn't matter if it takes six months to get the paper finally accepted in high impact international journal. So uh, uh, other things that uh, I have met that is um, amazing. One, I wrote once a paper to change what we call the golden rule of Gilbert about how when to operate on Epps palsy. And we've always been taught this uh, rule as uh, three months of age, no elbow flexion. You operate on babies with Epps palsy. So I did a study in Saudi Arabia and I wanted proof that one has to wait till four months, not three months. So I submitted this to one high impact journal. And uh, one of the reviewers wrote, who is uh, this doctor from Saudi Arabia who wants to change the golden room from three months to four months? 
Then I wrote back to the editor, very strong letter, said uh, this uh, uh, should Saudi Arabia or not Saudi Arabia should not be part of the review process. And that paper was eventually accepted. And uh, the textbooks now say uh, King Saudi University rule is four months instead of three months, like the French rule. So I think how to publish uh, as a summary is not that you sit on a desk and write a paper. No, it has to start when, as interest in, uh, med in as a medical student, then as a resident, then as staff. And it, it depends really on planning interest. And you don't, uh, I, I suggest one has to uh, not only do clinical, but at least try to go to the lab. If you don't have time to go to the lab, the lab at uh, many hospitals, especially university hospitals, are, uh, is able to help staff to you know, promote their idea and put it to the lab and there are research technicians that will uh, help you do that. And I do that in, in the lab at the King Saudi University of the Research Center. And I guess one of the most important things we have established at King Saudi University is a new division. And I'm proud that this was the first ever done in the Gulf area, which is called uh, the Experimental Surgery Division. This is not led by me, but uh, it's doctor, led by Dr. Mazen Hassanin, another uh, Canadian trained doctor in the Department of Surgery. And it has been practiced in Canada for many years now already, but has never been promoted in, in the Arab world, which means that you get a surgeon from the beginning, they say, I want to be, uh, spend 80% of my time in the lab and 20% clinical. And the 20% clinical is meant to be in touch with patients, in touch with surgery, and they will be the material for his lab. So um, we have now, I think, four residents in Canada being trained in experimental surgery. And when they come back, they will do 80% experimental uh, studies and publications, so on, and 20% as clinicians. And uh, it is my dream uh, to, to see, uh, before I die, uh, one of the doctors in Saudi Arabia to at least be nominated for a, for a Nobel Prize. Because we, I remember the rector of the university uh, once brought me to his office and said, you, you know, you are a legend in research in Saudi Arabia. When can we publish in Nature and Science? When can we you know, reach? And it, 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 we are still very far, unfortunately, from this. And the reason is we have to dedicate ourselves to say we have to have experimental surgeons, experimental physicians, that will spend almost all their time doing research and maybe 10, 20 years from now uh, will reach our goal uh, and be equivalent to all uh, uh, other countries, who, uh, universities who had people uh, among them nominated for Nobel Prize and published on a regular basis in Nature and Science. Thank you very much.